Welcome to Chandwell. My name is Michael and I'm building the back of a commercial street to run behind my station. This is the old Fluid Nightclub in Shipley. It's a brutal eyesore of a building which used to be Pockets Pool and Snooker Club. Yes, you are looking at mauve painted concrete, bare breeze block walls, stone built columns, a dark green entrance and signage that could have been drawn by a child. It is truly ugly and it would be sheer stupidity to build something like this next to the elegant if run down four storey Victorian stone properties of Market Street. Which is exactly why I am doing it. So here is how I went about starting to build my own concrete carbuncle. I start every build with a simple mock-up made out of scrap card. In a nod to the horrors that follow, here's a cute kitten to sweeten the build. It all gets much more ugly from here. With its straight lines and simple shapes, the building was a breeze to draw in Inkscape. I measured its width via Google Maps and scaled the rest to fit. I noticed on Google Street View that there is a fire escape around the side here. If we assume that this door is a typical 2.1 metre door, we can draw lines around the stonework to check the height of this arch here. My scaling was more or less spot on, but it is easy to adjust slightly in Inkscape. Even at this stage, the building jars with that next door. I was having second thoughts at this point and generally questioning my sanity. With the confidence that I can move it, extend it, change it or simply bin it, and with the positive comments in my last video in mind, I carried on regardless. I printed the various parts onto sticky label and mounted them on half and one millimetre card. The textures were printed onto photo paper. The front face is two layers of half millimetre card. This enables me to mount the windows half a millimetre into the building. All but two windows will be blocked up, like the current state of the real thing. I glued the main texture to the front face. The rust stains to match the Shipley building were also downloaded from textures.com. The vertical sides of the window apertures will be covered in the stonework of the columns, so I sliced the windows horizontally to give the top and bottom edges the same colour as the walls. These will look something like this. The stone columns were fiddly. They are only 3.9mm wide. Towards the top, the stonework needs to appear to go into the window aperture, so I added guides to help me cut the required flaps. A 1mm thick strip sits inside these and the texture is wrapped around. I'm left with a part wrapped column with flaps to slot into the window apertures. The effect of the texture going into the window aperture is subtle, but it works. I use the piece that I cut for the concrete detail later to help line up the floating columns above the door. The outer columns wrap around the edge of the building. To keep the column spacing equal, the overall width of the building needed to be reduced by the thickness of the card. To make the column the same width on either side, one piece needs to be thinner than the other by the same thickness as the card. I used a scale model scenery right angle jig to help me align the butt join of the two sides of the column. The thinner piece is only 2.6mm wide. Once joined and the glue dry, I dropped the column into a pre-scored piece of stone texture. I rubbed the outer edge with my scalpel handle to help give a crisp corner to the fold. The two windows that are not filled in need to be glazed. I used my usual sticky label technique to make tiny frames. The visible bit of glazing is only 2.6mm on each side. Once the glazing was in place, I added the second layer of the front face in place with PVA glue. I added the building sides next. Holding the folded outer texture in place in the jig, I pre-glued the side piece and dropped it into position. The right angle jig is perfect for this kind of join, as the building can be clipped to the outside of the jig to help keep everything square. The pre-made edge column then just drops into place. I use a marker pen to make the card black behind the windows. This piece is shorter so that the roof will have a base onto which I can glue it later. This is glued to the face which is now over 2mm thick and really sturdy. I add an edge piece in the same way. 
This is in the right position to fold the flap from the main doorway around to represent the inner wall of the entranceway. As well as the mauve walls and dark green entrance, the real thing had a faded red fire escape. This door from scale scenes fits the bill perfectly. I used the jig and some little clamps to keep everything square. I made the concrete block highlight in much the same way as the rest of the building. I glued it to the pre-cut texture and after wrapping one face, used the jig to help keep everything square while I added the other. The finished L-shaped piece of card would then just glue into position on the building. Once the face was on, I added internal ribs whilst keeping everything square with a clamp. The internal ribs are positioned so that the inner walls of the entrances can be wrapped with the flaps from the mauve concrete. A funny thing happened whilst I was making this building. What started as an eyesore and a bit of a joke has become something I'm quite fond of. I enjoyed the simple lines and shapes. I even began to notice the architectural design nods to the Art Deco cinema that the original building stood beside. Maybe channel member Mark was right. This is the beginning of my undoing. You can find details of channel membership, by the way, by pressing the join button beneath this video. Anyway, will this building work here on Market Street? Some have suggested I should use it at the front of the layout on Station Road, or even behind the bridge on Charlotte Lane. But you know what? I kind of like this monstrosity, and I like it on Market Street. Whether I will put it here, or one building further down the hill, I'm not yet sure. I have detailing complete. Roof, doors, signage, fire escape steps. And of course, a history to invent for this place, similar to that of the Royal Scot, which you can see here. What was it before the Pool and Snooker Club? Who visited here? What happened inside the walls of this concrete monstrosity? All will be revealed in a future video. So until then, thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.